In this video, we're going to look at number eight, the annual increase n in a bear population of size x is given by n equals 0.0002x times quantity 2000 minus x if the bears are not hunted. The number of bears killed each year by hunters is related to the bear population by k equals 0.2x. So the first thing to do is just make the sketch. I have it already done here, looking at the key. Um, and if you're wondering like how that came about, we have the factored form of the quadratic is n. So we know that if we set this 0 0.002, 0, 0, 0, 0002x equal to 0. We're going to get x equals 0. So that's this point here. And then the other one would be 2000 minus x equals 0, which would be 2000 equals x. And that's this point down here. Um, I could be very precise to get the um, vertex as well um, by just figuring out what the midway point is for that would be a thousand so that's my axis of symmetry right between my two x values and to find the corresponding y though what I would have to do is plug that 1000 in to the n function so I'm going to find n of 1,000 and make that calculation. So 2,000 minus 1,000 is just 1,000. So crunch those numbers, 200, and that really gives me the point 1,200. And that is my vertex. So you don't always have to do minus b over 2a. You could do that if you wanted to just, you know, expand this out um, and then figure out, you know, in the a squared, ax squared um, plus bx plus c format, you could do minus b over 2a to get your axis of symmetry. But if I already know my intercepts using factored form, it's a really nice way to just divide that in half. And there's your axis of symmetry, pop it in, and you get the 200. You'd have to do that uh, plugging in anyway. Um, you could use complete the square to put it in vertex form, but that would be way more complicated. I wouldn't suggest that for this problem. Then for the linear, you would just um, start at zero and increase 0.2x. I would just actually figure out what your y is at um, the vertex, get a couple of points and pop them in and graph. So now that we have that sketch on there, uh, we know this one is n and this one is k. So when the bear population is 1200, what will the population increase or decrease in the next year, okay, or will it increase or decrease in the next year, and by how many? So if I look at where 1200 is, and remember N, the blue curve there, the quadratic, represents my um, bear population, right? This is bears killed by hunters, but this is the it's kind of start decreasing again, right? So we need to figure out the size based on that. So um, if I look at my graph, I have, let's see, 1200 would be, you know, right about here. And the y-axis is how much it increased, or actually, in this case, it's going down, so it's decreasing um, a bit there, okay? So we need to um, use that information. So for part B, um, we have to find the difference in these two. So I kind of sketched it out here. I did figure out the numbers. I'll show you how to do that. But I want you to get the picture of it. So here's 1,200. 
when the curve, the bear population, um, not considering hunting, that would go down a bit here, like we were talking about. If I plug that value in there, the 1200, and find n of 1200, um, I'm, I'd let you crunch the numbers, just put 1200 in for x and, and solve, right? You will get 192. Okay, so that's what I marked over here. If you put it into the k function, put the 1200 in, you will get 240. So n of 12, sorry, k of 1200 would be 240. So we're going to actually find the difference in these. So for b, what I'm doing is taking k of 1200 minus the n of 1200, right? I'm just subtracting those two functions and I end up getting 240 minus 192 and that equals 48 bears, okay? So that's the difference in there and that's how I calculated that numerically. And on the graph, I just want you to see how that spacing works right there. Space in between um, your two um, functions. So we have the loss due to um, hunting, so that's like kind of an increase in the loss, and then the population decrease um, change here. Okay, so we have that difference. And that's how you would figure out each of these kind of things, just plugging in the x value, finding the y, and answering the questions. Um, so the one that I just did is actually number 10 on the answer key. I mean, on the um, regular sheet, it's number eight on the answer key. So I just want to make sure um, that tracking happens for you. So just to be clear, I'm going to change that. This is number 10. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but that is how you would set that all up. Um, now we can look at the sweet shop problem, which is this one. Um, and on this, it's labeled number eight on your work. So I'm going to go back to that sheet. All right, so sorry for jumping around a little there. It costs the sweet shop C of X equals 0.01 X squared plus $1,836 to produce X pounds of chocolate creams. Um, so that's my cost. The um, company charges $12 per pound. So revenue is always um, the number of items times the price. So we're gonna start by writing that out. So finding an equation giving revenue as a function of X. So we have R of X would equal the price times x, and we don't know x, we're just gonna leave that as our unknown. Let x equal the number of pounds of chocolate. You can just write that here. It's kind of stated in the problem, but just to be really clear, the price is this uh, $12 right here. So that translates, um, price times quantity, R of X equals 12 X. Okay, so that's part A. And that's that's all you do there. And then sketching C and R on the same axes, we do it the same way as the um, bear problem that we were just looking at. So I'll just kind of do that really quickly. Um, 12x would be, you know, kind of a steep, right? And then that's not a curve, that should be a straight line. It's a little hard for me to get straight on the tablet. Okay. Now our domain, if we sell nothing, we, we really just want to focus on the positive. We're not going to go into negatives, right? So if we would be starting at zero. 
and then this um, sketch here you could do it by figuring out minus b over 2a so for the c function is already done for you you could use uh, desmos for this too just to check it but minus b um we actually don't have a b it would be zero so then um my value for that would be zero over two a so that's going to be zero okay this one's a little tricky to graph by hand so i am i just put it into desmos and you can see on the left i have 12x that's the red line and 0.01 x squared plus 1836 is the um curve for my quadratic so what happened here is if so my axis of symmetry is zero where my vertex was and that's also my y-intercept right so we talked about minus b over 2a would have been zero and then if you put that in you actually get the same value as your y-intercept so it's a little awkward than you know different than we've been used to um you can see the first point of intersection on the graph is 180 for the x value and 2160 for the y. The second point of intersection is kind of way up here. Let's see if I can get it. If you just touch it, it'll kind of put a dot where you want it to be. So 1020 pounds, um, 12,240. So that's when my revenue equals my cost. So those are considered my break even points. When I ha would have 180 pounds of chocolate creams and 1,020 pounds of chocolate creams. So somewhere, you know, in between there, I'm getting profit. So we want to see, you know, what production levels will, will give me that. Now, if you want to algebraically determine the break even points, you would have to just um, set the points equal to one another. So let's look at that. I'm just going to get rid of this because I put it in Desmos. Um, so to find where they intersect any graph you would do this for uh, just set the two equations equal to each other so I would have my c of x equal to my r of x or vice versa c of x is 0 0.01 x squared plus 1836 and then equals my 12 x so now you would just go ahead and um, subtract those actually I'm going to reverse it just so I'm going to set myself up for a profit equation because profit is when you subtract um, the cost from the revenue so here's my 12x equals 0.01x squared plus 1836 that way my signs will match so I'm going to have a negative 0.01x squared plus 12x um, and then the minus 1836 it's equal to zero because it's a quadratic I can't just solve it out easily like I would if it were linear and the break even points if I go through this and use quadratic formula or you know pop it into Desmos um, which we can do that on a third thing I'm gonna just pause the video and do that okay so I put that into Desmos over here in the green you can see it and that's my profit function actually and so I want to know when um, profit is zero that's my break-even point so if I touch there I would see at 180 pounds and um, 1020 pounds so that gives me my uh, profit well actually when my um, profit is equal to zero that means my revenue equals my cost the other point that I get off of here is my vertex so at 600 pounds of chocolate I'm maximizing I'm getting the most profit 1764 so that's really great information right there and that answers the rest of it um, for your questions down here um 
again, you can, this is really good, it's part C, um, you can just use the quadratic formula to solve this out algebraically, um, is how I would do that. You can um, just um, use Desmos is fine for this, for these purposes here. Okay, so I hope that helps. And then that would be part D is where we got the um, the I'll show you again in Desmos. In between here is all where you know you're going to have some profit in between there. Okay, and this is your max profit. All right, so I hope that helps, um, and let me know if you have any other questions on that.